Hey, it's Monday night. Time for Boys Over Body Shop. We got lots of cool stuff. Yes, we do. We have a great guest tonight, a guy that's been on every television and animation production ever made. <laughs> yeah. Roger Rose. And you're going to hear about a very tiny fraction just a of little, it tonight. Just, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, plus we got tech couple, stuff. A couple tech questions. Yeah. You know, and if you have a tech question for us, send it in in the chat room. And well, I have a rant. Oh, he has a rant. And we'll change the acoustics in here to make sure that it, it's fully understood. <laughs> Coming up right now on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro and Source Connect Now, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to become a successful voice artist, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. The VO Dojo. Take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, good evening. Yeah. That's the audience I paid for. All right. I'm Dan Leonard, by the way. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yeah. yeah. Wow, suddenly yes. we're doing Howdy Duty. Apparently it's... they take PayPal. <laughs> Amazing. So that helps. Uh, everybody takes <laughs> PayPal. <laughs> it's some of the other weird ones that I, I can't Venmo? figure out. Venmo. No, that, that one takes Venmo. Oh, okay. That's the one. I, I want to learn how to use Venmo, but <laughs> PayPal is no, you fine. Don't. Okay, good. <laughs> anyway, uh, Roger Rose is our guest tonight. This, yes, guy's, is. this guy is a star. He's been on every show that my kids have ever watched in a pile that I've watched. Very nice. So uh, there's some some of my favorites, We're hear like a few stories, you know, like uh, Billy and Mandy. One of our it's great stuff. Anyway, uh, he'll be with us a little bit later on, and uh, we'll have lots of questions for him. We also would love to get your tech questions. So if you have a tech question for us, Jack Daniel is sitting there right on the couch in our social media uh, studio, Den. our Den uh, <laughs> Operations Center. <laughs> And uh, he will relay those tech questions to George and I. And then later on, you can ask questions of Roger Rose as well. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be lots of fun. Anyway, right now, it's time for... That's the VOBS Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. So what's up in tech this week? You have a rant of some sort? I think this week's going to be a bit of a rant. Okay, so this, I'll this, stand back On then. Sunday, I took my uh, daughter out to an event venue that's called uh, Glow Zone. Glow Zone is an indoor video game and activity. Laser tag, center. all that Roger's kind of stuff. Roger's nodding his head. Yeah. You, you know about this place? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Um, <laughs> this place is, well, maybe you should just play the video and then explain. So okay. I think we have a video queued up that I shot of being inside this venue, what it's like to be in Glow Zone. Can you play that back for us, Hat? Reverberating echo chamber. And every five minutes they make some kind of announcement and you have no idea what they say. Not a clue. It's so loud in here. You got 20 points? 17. It's, it's an absolute assault on the 
the census is what it's saying. And I know you're watching me talk, but you probably can't tell what I'm saying. The camera is 10 inches away from me right now. That's how loud it is. So, <laughs> you get an idea. That is like moderate. That's like when the place was starting to get busy. Oh, cripes. Later on, they started making announcements saying the Jimenez, the Jimenez party of 28, time to go eat your cake. You know, but they would say it louder than that so they could be heard over the din of what you were just hearing. So, like, even, like, less intelligible than, say, like, calling for a subway in they, New York. They had huge uh, PA speakers hung around the venue. And if yeah. you were so unfortunate as to be near one, <laughs> like crawling around on that huge fluorescent thing, that thing that was behind me was this huge fluorescent structure mm -hmm. that you get to walk along and you get to do rope features and right. it looks like an obstacle course. There was a speaker hanging up there. And if you were near that thing when they made an announcement, it felt like it was going to knock you off the structure. Anyway, why is that place so horrendously bad? It's because it that? has... No, thank you, friend. <laughs> it has absolutely no acoustical treatment of any kind. Zilch. I looked all around the place. It is a complete hard top, like, hard floor. Like an old warehouse type of it's thing. It's like an old warehouse with just concrete drywall. Everything's hard <laughs> in that place. It is a nightmare. So if anybody from Glow Zone happens to stumble on this clip that I'm going to take from the show and then post on their social media so everybody sees this, at Glow Zone sees this clip. Please, I know how to help you with this. <laughs> so does this guy right next to me. We need to help you make this venue a place that we as parents want to go with our families and our kids because it is a nightmare. I could not, I was in there for an hour and a half and I had had enough. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure pretty, your, your ears were ringing. After I'm that. pretty tolerant, but man, the din was unbelievable. Wow. But it, I, that said, that's my rant. It was actually pretty fun. I'm, it, I'm sure it was great. Those games are always fun to play. Th there's the fun games. There's a laser, uh, not only a laser tag room, but a laser dodging room where you have to crawl through the oh, laser wow. beams and not trip the laser and make an alarm go off. Do they shoot you if it does? Or? Yeah, there was a lot of dead bodies suddenly in, a in the room. But, yeah, <laughs> no. Anyway, if you go into a restaurant and the and the server has to kneel next to you, because that's the only way you're going to hear them yeah. ask you. What, that's a bad sign. That's and bad. So what is my point? The point is, is that acoustics are important all the way across the board, from the tiniest voiceover booth to the largest enclosed space. And you really want to make sure that wherever you're forced to work, forced to eat, live, whatever it is, get those acoustics dialed in make that place intelligible yeah tim tippets was just talking about that last week yeah he was talking about when he worked for uh, chipotle that's right you that know, was one of his things that he took on right, right. making the restaurants you know intelligible so you could have a conversation Absolutely. super important it really is yeah. well roger rose is coming up in just a little bit mm -hmm. and we've got a couple of tech questions to deal with uh and if you've got any toss them in the chat room right now and jack will relay those to us and we'll be right back here on voiceover body shop you're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. Wow. This is VOBS? You're listening to VOBS. Minus four, are we at minus 4 dB? We're at minus 4 dB on VOBS. Hey, will 2018 be the year you take your voiceover practice to the next level? If not, you can go back to checking your email while this message is airing. I think that there might be an old bottle of wine left in the fridge somewhere that might help it out. But if you're serious about dramatically upping your level of success, I want you to go to a very, very, very special URL. That's VO, the number two, gogo.com forward slash VOBS. That's VO2GoGo.com forward slash VOBS. Join the hundreds of VO practitioners around the entire world who have decided to do something positive for their career and get themselves ready for this new year. Learn VO from the ground up or from where you are for to where you want to be. 
VO2GoGo.com forward slash VOBS. Let's make 2018 your year. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. Right? And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. All right, we're back on VoiceOver Body Shop. Yes, we are. Doing our finest voiceover voices. <sighs> actually, voiceover voices. Actually, we're what I might refer to as right. voice overacting. We have a we have a cantankerous wise anchor of an audience member over here. Actually, that's our guest, Roger Rose. All right, okay. <laughs> All righty. So, anyway, if you're wondering... Why George and I come on here every week and tell you all this stuff about home voiceover studios? Nobody on God's green earth knows more about the unique environment that is a home voiceover studio than he and I. And we don't say that just to brag. We just happen to know that as a fact. We've actually counted all the people we've worked with and we're like, nobody else has worked with that I many people. I lost count around a thousand, yeah. <laughs> frankly, but at this point, yeah. yeah. So you don't want to talk to somebody who's like an expert in one studio their own you want to right. talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about and if they want to get a hold of george what do they do well you panic and then you google <laughs> george the tech.com just type in george the tech.com and that's where all my services are located i can be booked by the half hour the hour on site remotely you can do offline services where you send the audio and i send you back the goodies related to the project cool it's all over there and dan how do yeah. they find you? You sure. can find me a number of places. The best place is homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can write to me at dan at danleonard.com with no O. See, there's no O there. It separates me from the rest of the Leonards. Oh. See, at least that's what my father told me. Uh, so uh, if, if you have some audio you want to have checked out, I have a specimen collection cup at the bottom of my uh, homepage. Just click on that. It's a Dropbox. Send me an MP3 of your audio. And we will uh, give you an analysis of the audio. And if it's really, really bad, we'll talk. Anyway, what are our questions tonight? We have one from Susan Parker, who I'll asks, start with that one. Yes, I am about to embark full-time in my, on my voiceover career. Well, good luck. After 25-plus years in the oil and gas industry in the UK and the USA. Hmm. That's, okay. She knows something about gas, so maybe she'll have a chance. Uh, yes, she says... I am a Scottish, Amer a Scottish American and recently moved after 15 years from Houston, Texas to reinvent it myself in beautiful Naples, Florida, which I'm is already lost. Yeah. Can you take me through that journey? No. Okay. <laughs> I, well, now, now you'll totally tune in here. It says, I am about to acoustically treat my booth and would very much appreciate your thoughts on this photos attached. My thoughts were to use acoustic foam panels. The closet is 62 square uh, inches with an square. eight foot ceiling. It's square. Yeah. All right. Well, How do you treat a 62 inch square box, which is basically what you're talking about? Right. Squares are really tough because when you have a square floor plan, you have 90 degree angles. And there's, and there's things called um, nodes or modes, and that's when a sound resonates and bounces back and forth between the two parallel walls. That happens at a very specific set of frequencies based on how far the walls are from each other. Well, that's all well and good. If, if both sets of walls are exactly the same distance, whatever that node is, whatever that thing is where it resonates, could you'll be hear 200 it. 200 hertz. It's going to get really bad in one or two spots, well, maybe several spots in that room. So the first thing you have to figure out is where in that room is it going to sound okay? Right. Because you have to work around those resonances. Right. And and usually when we go into somebody's, you know, room that they're trying to prepare, I like to call it sniffing around. 
Mm -hmm. You just go in the middle of the room and move along to different corners and where would be the best place to set up a mic and where is it going to reverberate and you can hear the direction the node's coming from and then it's yeah. like it's there yeah even once the room is acoustically tuned there's still going to be some spots that don't sound so hot and others that sound pretty darn good right um so and small rooms are tough to tune and get them to sound real good because there's not a lot of room for the sound to breathe and kind of escape and res it just wants to echo back at you no matter what you do right. so foam yeah. She wants to use foam. But not bed foam. Great for preventing bed sores, but really bad for absorbing sound. Uh, you want to be using something like Oralax or ATS panels or building your own from Roxel. And, you know, and we have all sorts of videos on doing that as well. She also was underneath a couple of shelves. And they weren't wire shelves. They were, I think oh, they were wood, wood shelves. shelves. Okay. You know, some people will say, uh, they'll send me my uh, their audio and I'll listen. I'll go, are you under a shelf? Yeah. Go, yeah. Why is that? Because it sounds like you're under a shelf. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's. I don't. I don't have an extra shelf that doesn't isn't covered in thousands of dollars worth of microphones. Right. But if we were to lift this shelf over your head. Yes. Do we? Are we going to do this? Uh, we can do that. Here. Go, go ahead. ahead. Okay. All right. Do you hear what it sounds like when you're under a shelf? That's just, what happens. Just nod. Yeah. Okay, just just pretend. <laughs> so, oh, that we we can see them all nodding there. <laughs> anyway, so. So get out from under the shelf. <laughs> All right, Roger. <laughs> um, get out from under the shelf, and um, if you're going to use foam, you need a lot of it, and it needs to be thick. The, the standard two-inch thick foam is not generally adequate enough to absorb the whole frequency range of the voice. Right. It will do really good to, to a certain degree, and then after that, it just lets sound bounce around. So... If you're going to use foam, have at least some four-inch foam as well on the ceiling and on some of the walls. Right. But the the stuff from ATS, the Roxel, or the fiber stuff, stuff made out of cotton. Cotton, right. Heavy moving blankets. That kind of stuff is really effective, and you get a lot more bang for the buck out of that, I think, right. than the foam. Yeah. Okay. Question from Fred North. Thunderbolt 3 and USB 3, is this something we need to start migrating toward? Mm, boy, mm. it's funny you mention this, Fred, because on the way over here, I was trying to think of a good topic, and this is something I had thought about was maybe we haven't really talked about this stuff in a while. So, Thunder, oh, we have another question. So, I won't, I won't drone on for too long on this one, okay? But because it, it's easy to do, Dan happens to have a product here that has numerous little specs printed on the box that confuses the layman and even someone that's looked at these things i had to look I, at I this still for don't a while it. and go what are they talking about when they say it has a usb a usb c and pd 2.0 ports on it mm. so let's just start with this one thing this one thing is a usb hub you guys are all familiar with those but this one plugs in with usb c usb c is the new fangled usb jack that's on all of the newest Macs, right? The new iMacs, the MacBook Pro, the MacBook, uh, not the Air yet, but the MacBook, just the MacBook. They all have USB-C. You're seeing it on some PCs. You're seeing it on some Android phones. This breaks out to anything you pretty much want. You can have USB, regular USB jacks. Those are the USB-A jacks we're all familiar with. Right. That's what you can plug hard drives into and memory card readers and all that kind of stuff. But this thing also has a USB uh, Type-C port as well as the plug that it plugs into the computer. So that not only can you use it to plug a USB drive in, but the PD signifies that it works upstream or for char uh, upstream charging. And we figured out right before the show what the heck that means. Upstream, char upstream charging means you can plug a powerful USB charger into the hub, and it will charge whatever's plugged into the hub, uh, whatever computer's plugged into the hub. Right. So these things not only can charge a cell phone or an iPad, they can charge the entire computer if it has a USB-C port. Right. So that's part of the story. That covers the USB-C stuff. Yeah. Now, I've I've had clients, and they're like, I just bought a new Mac. And they try to plug a regular USB, you know, interface into it. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> sort of like the Vern Lundquist. Dongle ooh. hell. Yes. Actually, uh, Jack's got a MacBook Pro over there, and it, it literally has just 
four USB-C ports on it that yeah. you'll see around. Yeah. They make there's, they make custom buses for those though that just plug in into those two yeah, ports. Yeah, there's and, docks and breakout stations and all that. However, there's more to the story. Like there's USB-C more. USB-C isn't just USB. It's also in a Mac Thunderbolt, and it's not Thunderbolt one. It's not Thunderbolt two. It's Thunderbolt three. So, do you need to have support for all this stuff? No, not for voiceover. You really don't. This stuff is all for extreme high-speed data transfer, doing video production, all that kind of stuff. Right. Generally, USB 2 is fine for most of us. Thunderbolt, if you have a device that uses it, fine. Don't go out of your way upgrading all of the stuff that you have just to have Thunderbolt. You really don't need it. Most of us don't need it. Right. And Thunderbolt 3 particularly is so new, there's so little knowledge about it and so little gear that supports it. It's really too bleeding anyway, edge right now. So it's not worth it to go there quite yet. Check back in the fall. Fall. Okay. Maybe we'll have a new story okay. about that. Simple one from Dave Smith. Good. Thank he you. Said, uh, he says, a friend told me he had a noise floor of over minus 80 dB or under minus 80 Probably, dB. Hopefully under. Yeah, over minus. Well, okay. Well, whatever. It, it's minus, six, minus 60 dB. Okay. I thought that anything minus 55 or over was acceptable. What is the minimum noise floor? What's the over or under? What's, what's your victor vector? Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, you and I were on a committee where we decided what is the standard noise floor that we should go for. And I think as a as a committee, you and I and Uncle Roy and Cliff Zellman and a bunch of other guys. Jordan Reynolds. Yeah. Jordan Reynolds. We said minus 55 is probably the best. Anything more than that, trying to filter the noise out, it's going to show up. Yeah, and the over and under thing can be a little confusing. Right. So Dave is talking about over minus 55. That means we under, really mean minus, under minus 55. 55. So as you go up in negative numbers, they look larger, but they're actually lower. Right. So a l minus 60 is better than it's minus excellent. 55. Yeah, That's minus actually good. really, really good. Yeah, somebody who's at minus 80 is lying. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say they probably are because I know the best studios in town that have spent literally millions of dollars trying to get even close to that kind of a number and it's not possible so when you when your friend says they have minus 80 i would like for them to prove it and how would they prove it send a sample of their audio of their <laughs> voice with the room tone afterward and send it to us we'll tell you if it really no is minus processing. 80. no processing no, gates, no expanders no. no noise reduction not gonna happen if you if you have minus 65 or even minus 70 in your home studio that's exceptional. You probably live in the middle of nowhere, not in an apartment. You're probably in a basement yes. somewhere. Yes. That's that's very hard numbers yeah. to get. In, in the bottom of some sack base somewhere. <laughs> right. You know, at the bottom of a silo. Maybe then. Or maybe in Wyoming. Or Wyoming. <laughs> in the middle of a field. Yeah. Just don't trip over the... Uh, the the prairie dog holes and <laughs> exactly. stuff. Uh, one more question from Efren Gonzalez. This one might take a little while, so why don't we save this for the last segment of our show? Ooh. Talking a little bit about ISDN and Ipdiddle and those sorts of oh, things. Oh, yeah. Let's let's do that after, so that way Roger is able to leave sometime today. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd probably appreciate that. He probably would. All right. Well, saying that, why don't we take a break, and when we come back, we'll have Roger Rose right here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Hey, everybody. I want to talk about Source Elements, one of the wonderful sponsors of VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm so glad I had coffee right before we went on the air. Woo! 
Ooh, let's rock this. Uh, Source Elements is a fantastic product, a producer of, of audio equipment, mainly source uh, software. Um, their software allows you to replace antiquated equipment like ISDN codec boxes and such and replace it with reliable and very high quality software, such as Source Connect. If you want to give Source Connect a try, go over to source-elements.com and you can get a 15-day free trial right away and start playing with it. You don't have to have one of those little USB dongly things that's made by iLock to use Source Connect. It's something that you can start demoing and you can pay for it on a month-by-month -month basis. So if Tell you have that job come along, you can get signed up and <laughs> 15 <laughs> for a 15-day free trial, you can start using it right away. So really? Yes, you can. Are you on camera right now, Dan? What's it like being in Palm Springs? You <laughs> <laughs> need sunscreen. Uh, we have a lively audience tonight. Um, so anyway, give it a try. SourceElements.com is the place. You should give it a try now if you have to work on that higher level, working with studios around the world, and just e emailing MP3s just isn't cutting it anymore. S tell them we sent you. We'd appreciate it. And we'll be right back here with Dan and Roger, right here in the studio. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Thanks for joining us once again for another episode of Voice Over Body Shop. Hey, you know, Roger Rose here is an American actor. You are American, right? Last time I checked. Okay, good. Uh, voice actor, former VH1 VJ, known and known for such films as Ski Patrol 1, and for voice work in animated films and television series such as Happy Feet, Rugrats, Scooby-Doo, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, one of my all-time favorites, and Quack Pack. I don't think I remember that one. His Are we doing Louie? Yeah, oh, okay. His voice is also very apparent in trailers and voluminous amounts of video games, just to name a few. Let's welcome Roger Rose to yeah. Voice Over Body Show. Thank you. Thank you. What a pleasure to have you on. I'm just playing George as a child in a TV movie. That's all I am doing. Yeah, so. I, I know what his childhood was like. So you're in mm. for some some you know lots of loud noise. Um, <laughs> no. Now you have one of the best IMDb's I have ever seen. Oh really? Thank it's you. it just goes on and on and on and on. I mean TV. You've been in series on you know sitcoms. And a lot of really successful animated features and and movies and stuff like that. How does one lead themselves there? Give us a little bit of quick background. Drugs. Uh, a lot of that's, drugs. That's what I was suspecting. <laughs> Alcohol. I just, before we get to that, I, you know, what's this like that uh, broadcast news thing? Mm -hmm. Look, George's hand! Oh, I'm trying to not... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, it's like the broadcast news. That was scary. That was a good movie. Yeah. Um, you know, do you sit... Like this, or is it more like this? You know, what, what's the more cash thing? Like, You're not giving me an answer on this no, one because I, I'm always moving around anyway. Oh, I see. Okay, I just wondered if it was you know that this sweat yeah. starts coming. Yeah. This isn't like the actor's studio. Or oh, yeah. James Lipton going. Oh, yeah, you know, James so. studio. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you're asking what? You're asking how does one get in the business? Or? How did you, Roger Rose, get into the business? Well, it all started in a log nice. cabin. No, um, you know, I did a TV show with Ted Knight. Really? If you are old enough to remember Ted Knight, he was on the Mary Tyler Moore show. You know, it was I think I remember that one. You know, Marilyn. <laughs> and I did a show called Too Close for Comfort. Oh, and, yes. And I played, don't get too excited, Jim J. Bullock's best friend. And uh, so uh, I was already doing voiceover. And, and so Ted Knight said, I understand you do an impression of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, go ahead and do it. And I went, okay, hello, Mayor, Mayor Lou. He goes, that's not bad. But what happens is people who don't do impressions, they like to do them for you. Right. And so he said, I do some. I go, okay. He goes, this is John Wayne. Hey there, cowboy. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's, that's good. good. Yeah. And he goes, and now Jimmy Stewart. Well, well, well. I'm like, oh. What are you, gonna, you know, I'm on his show. I'm like, I don't know where I went there. Anyway, yeah, so yeah. I've voiceover was always my thing. I always wanted to be a voiceover guy. My parents, uh, uh, my father was a uh, talk show host in, here in California. My mom was on NPR in Chicago, wow. and she was also a radio actress. So I was around voiceover studios my whole life, so I was, always knew it. And uh, I just, I, I did the on-camera stuff, hosted TV shows, things of that sort. 
but I always kept voiceover. And I actually did a, I hosted a show on uh, the original MSNBC called America's Talking. And uh, in my contract, they wouldn't let me do anything else because it was on an NBC network, except for voiceover. They're like, <laughs> voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that, little boy, right? And I had this huge contract, which was, uh, uh, you know, ironclad and everything, except for voiceover. And so I would do my live show, but then I'd go during the day to studios and go. Okay, okay you can stop. George just came in. Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, George Whittem. There's his ass. Oh, that was nice. All right, yeah. Nice. By the way, for your engineering needs, George is your man. Okay, anyway. I knew there was no way I could not be on camera, so you know, you just might... George is the best. He saved my butt eight million ways to Sunday. Uh, he does when, that. When you're ready to talk about that, I will tell you about my lovely remotes. Excellent. And my lovely daughter, uh, Manny, is here, and she knows that she's never had a vacation because it's always, wait a second, I'll just be here with a thing on my head and the ISDN. Okay, anyway, go on. Yeah. Well, no, so how did you get into all of this stuff? What stuff? The stuff, all the acting and the voice. You you were in voiceover, but you've had all these roles. Oh in yeah, series. yeah. I, uh, um, I, you know, this is a part of the voiceover thing. You gotta just. You, it's really weird. I set my goals uh, high, but I didn't set them high enough. I said if I could only be in a commercial, if I could only be on a TV show, if I could only be in a movie, and then all of a sudden I was in all those things. Right. If I can only do a promo on a network TV show. If I could only do, and I would do a promo, but it'd be like one that's in the middle of the night. Right. You know, and it was me and a duck. They paid me $5 and it was an evening. Right. So I said, if I can only star in a movie, I can only star in a TV show. If I can only have, uh, be the, the main voice of a network and everything like that. And I got, got all that, but I shouldn't have said if the movie needed to be a massive hit, like black Panther, <laughs> you know, Black voiceover, yeah, yes. whatever. Uh, but that wouldn't be me anyway. And uh, so all the shows I do went, but luckily I got to do uh, voiceover for a network, and that I did a couple networks, but you know one particular network. But you got to aim high. You got to keep doing it. And uh, if I may tell a story, that's why you're here. Oh, thank you. Um, this sort of interacts with voiceover and everything else. So when I first started in voiceover, I was the voice for monster movies i was the death of every cheapo movie you could ever think of uh, roger <laughs> corman and empire uh there's a movie called the reanimator mm -hmm. and Re reanimator 2 i am every male monster voice in that movie and pat music is every female voice and they pay us nothing to come in there and go <laughs> like there, there's, there's a guy with an elevator with rips his arm off right and, all that stuff. and there's a really horrifying scene where i um where a headless man, my daughter's in the room, goes down on a woman, <laughs> and, I'm, and and I had to like go <laughs> something that effect. Anyway, uh, oh, it was terrible. It was, and then Pat Pat had to make the noises, and we still laughed about that. <laughs> so that set you up for now. You were yeah. well trained for doing video games. So then they started. They, the sound engineers started knowing that I could do all these different deaths, and I there would be these horrible Romanian movies where. Eight guys would be shooting at each other and killing themselves, and I was all eight guys, you know. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. But yeah. you learn. This is how you learn. You learn on the job, and I learned so many cool things. And they, you know, gave me a dollar and a and a kick in the pants and said, "You know, thanks for coming." So one one day, doo -loo, doo -loo, uh, I got called to do Friday the Thirteenth Part Six, Ooh. not five, not five, not, not seven. seven. Six, and this one was way different. He was in the forest and he was killing people teens so anyway it was way different it was anyway so i said to the director i says because i'm doing every male death in that thing my favorite one was where they squeeze the guy's head and his brain pops out anyway see the thing is subtlety yeah because you don't want to go Bleh! with the brain no but if a brain's gonna pop out of your head it's just Bleh! anyway so uh by the way my daughter's over there doing this <laughs> okay, you know, another story, Dad. Great. Um, anyway, so, uh, so where was it? Oh, yes. So that I said to the director as we're doing the voice, I said, you know, I always wanted to die brutally in a movie. So he said, mm, okay. I swear I'm not making this up. Phone rings, mm -hmm. and it's Paramount Pictures, and they said you don't have enough deaths in your movie, so I need you to add two deaths and shoot in Griffith Park this weekend. So he hangs up the phone. He said, I always wanted to do this, kid. <laughs> 
I want you in my movie. <laughs> that was because of voiceover. And I did something completely different that I've never done before. Uh, those movies ever did before. I was doing the deed with some girl in the forest at 4 a.m. And then he kills us. He shish kebabs us. Yeah. Right? I think that's I another saw story. that one. <laughs> yeah, right. It's totally different than the others. <laughs> and uh, that's another story altogether. But then as a result of that, uh, and there's a whole story with it, I then out of nowhere get an audition for VH1. And I get to tell my audition story about Jason and killing me and all that. And I got VH1. So voiceover has been very, very good to me. Yeah. Well, it's it's led you down that, the long corridor. And I always kept the doorways. Always and, kept it. And when a door opens and an opportunity comes. I fall through it. You got to <laughs> go. You, ah. you got to deliver. And apparently you deliver. That is, that's, that's the old line, which is very true. Uh, uh, which is one of the things I, you and I had talked about before. Uh, you weren't present for it, but if you had been, you would have heard it. Fascinated, but I'm not going to talk about it yeah. because this was before. And by the way, Sav will clean that up. Um, <laughs> no, uh, with that the once you're in the door, behind the microphone, fixing, doing whatever you're doing in this business, then you better know what you're doing. But to get in that door, to to, and I'm I'm talking in the way you and Widom will do your stuff, or anyone else. It's who you know, luck, making the circumstances happen for you. Getting in the door and all that, it's not member FDIC. That's, you've already gotten in the door. So it is creating the thing. And and one of the things I have to say about voiceover, anytime you want to jump in, I'm just like, you know, you have a nap here. You're the star tonight. I'm just the host. Uh, Well, (laughs) that's, well, in that case. Please sing. <laughs> like Mike Douglas? <laughs> uh, then I'll be John Lennon. All right. Let's go. We both I'll be saw Yoko. that one, didn't I'll be we? Yoko, actually. Yeah. That's right. That was a great week on the Mike Douglas <laughs> show. <laughs> it was. We're about the same age. Obviously, we were watching but the same stuff. the best, actually, yeah. the best job I had for voiceover on camera in my entire career yeah. was Paige at CBS. Really? I got everything in my career to this day was based on that job because when you wear the little red coat they'll let you in anywhere yeah and i sitcoms were being made as a matter of fact if you watch the opening of three's company mm-hmm. my very first job wow i was a page at cbs i was 18 years old and a guy said hey what are you doing this weekend and i said uh, he goes, you want to make a thousand dollars I'm thinking, no. I'm thinking this is Hollywood. This is gonna be bad. Uh, no, and it was me and uh, Don Knotts, and it's the it's the opening on the beach, right? And I'm what you think is a girl in a bumper car that Larry the neighbor. Oh, gets she in. is. It's me. I'm 18. They put a wig and a mustache on me. <laughs> yes, and that was being a page at CBS, yeah. and I did a million other shows and met so many people in voiceover and on camera and. It, that's an example of paying me like 10 bucks an hour, but I took advantage of it and yeah. I got to meet. Yeah. That's everyone. like at CBS over on Fairfax. Television and, City in Hollywood. Yeah. Yes. And then the irony of ironies, <laughs> this is where you get brought down to earth. Uh, there was a period where uh, at the very end of Bob Barker, he was looking for a new uh, announcer because Rod Roddy had passed right, away. Yeah. And I'm wrong for that one because they really want a guy that's going to open it. Come yeah. on down. Yeah, they want it. And it's, and it's the toughest voiceover job I think I've ever done where it's one hour, no mistakes. You are not, as the voiceover guy, no mistakes. Like a 30-page script, you get one rehearsal, and then they are pissed if you screw up. It's a new car! And all that. Anyway, uh, so I did a week on it, and, and I did the warm-up of the audience, and there was the page in the back. Like 15 years before, that was me. Yeah. And he's there in the back, and I go, you know, and I'm saying this to the audience, well, that was me, and one day that could be you. And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, right. Who cares? He could care less. <laughs> he didn't want to know about it, and I was right. so bummed. Uh, so, anyway. If you're wondering who we're talking to, uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's Roger Rose, who's been in just about everything that's ever been Alien. done. <laughs> yes. If you've got a question for him, <laughs> oh my God, it's growing out of it. That's right. Uh, if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room, and Jack Daniel will pass it on to us, and then he will be glad to answer anything. Anyway. <laughs> Not a thing. All righty. Um, you work with Rosie O'Donnell on VH1? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think it, you have to follow the show business acumen of never, if you have nothing nice to say about somebody, say it. Yeah. <laughs> and in her case, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I really don't like talking uh, about people and if I've had bad experiences, but she was so mean to the people 
And she knows it. She knows it. And there's a, we were on VH1 together. We started out together on that. And she was so not nice to me and to all the other people. But 10 years later, she's doing her talk show. And I'm at a restaurant and there's a tap on my shoulder. And uh, somebody comes in and it's, no. Uh, And uh, she said, listen, I don't know what was wrong with me then. Please forgive me. She shook my hand. She introduced me to this woman named Cindy who went, hello, and scared the crap out of me. And, uh, and so so I thought, you know what? She's really cool. And then a friend of mine was interviewing her for Entertainment Weekly following that week. And he goes, she didn't mean that. And uh, can I swear? I can't swear. We don't give a shit, really. Oh, okay. You don't give, give a, a shit. shit. <laughs> so, she's, so he interviewed her and he said, let's go back to the VH1 days. And uh, what about Roger Rose? And she said, ah, that guy's a F. <laughs> so well you probably deserve that maybe so. i did yeah maybe i did <laughs> I mean, you could see i let things go right no no in this case i wanted to because it was just you know but vh1 was the greatest so much fun 30 uh you know seven days a week yeah. 20 breaks a show it was unbelievable so you just go in tape the breaks and you write everything and, you produce it all it was it was guerrilla tv we got to do whatever we wanted traveled all around the world right uh and at the same time i was the voice of showtime Wow. And that paid me more than VH1 paid me. Wow. And so I would go in. This is a great voiceover story. I would go in. They paid you by the hour. And they paid huge. And so I'm taping TV shows and everything. So I go to this place over on 57th in New York. And they pay you by the hour. So if it was like 9.01, you got another hour's pay. And it was, you know, so tonight on Showtime. And there's another example. They wanted a, a, a comedian. Chevy Chase meets blah, blah, blah. You know, walking in, they're never going to want that. So you go in and you're funny in the room. And then when you go behind the microphone, you go tonight, you know, you don't do that whole routine. Right. So anyway, the guy that was the producer was going through a horrifying divorce and I would sit there. I get there at nine. He would go, I'm on the phone with my uh, divorce attorney. Just give me a couple minutes. And I go, oh, this is good. And I just sit there, read a magazine about 10 one. He go. Give me, give me a little more time. I got to talk to my to my wife, and, blah, blah. and I would make so much money because he was going through this awful divorce. <laughs> anyway, it, yeah. it, it, that showbiz kid. That's yeah, <laughs> the way it works. Uh, now you've done, you've done a lot of series. What's it like to really work on a on a on a, on a sitcom? Is because uh, well, that's I, sometimes it's a live audience. And yeah, yeah, it's the best. It's everything you hear. Uh, I did Seinfeld, and that is everything. And Rosie O'Donnell came in. No, uh, <laughs> the nicest people, what you'd hope. It, w- it was at the zenith of that show. And every last one of them, except nobody gave me any direction. And I would say to the director, well, what am I supposed to do? And he goes, just do what you did in the audition. And I had lived in the audition. I'm like, <laughs> and then I'm s- sitting there. And uh, surprisingly enough, Mariska Hargaday was in the episode I was in. Mariska Hargaday. Yes. You know, <laughs> you know, and she's, they were telling her stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm dead. They're going to can me. And then Seinfeld walked by me one day and went, very hilarious. And I went, oh, I get it. If you, they don't say anything to you. And it was so great. It was so much fun. And, and the audience, you get to, you know, the three camera. And then just one camera stuff is, it's all. What, but you got to be wanting. Our job is to look for a job. That's what we do. Right. The job is the fun part. So, like, uh, if you're on a set that's 12, 14-hour days, I love it. I love it. But you have to love it. It's like stand-up comedy. If you love Doing it, you'll put up with all the drunks and well, you know, like you. Yeah, exactly. And uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so in 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 it's it's acting, but voice acting is acting. Mm-hmm. And in trying to get work, I think what you, I hear you saying is is you ad lib the audition. A lot of people just read the script as it is, but that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for the original thought. How do you get yourself into? All right, I see this a different way, and just go with it. Well, I mean, there's the technical and the professional side. And the technical side is, you know, you guys. And there's a big mistake everyone makes just because I know there's a big technical audience here. And George taught me this. He did? He did. Yeah, he said, <laughs> the ladies like it when... You- oh, no, the other thing George taught me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, then we know he was lying. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, he told me he loved me. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> when you're auditioning... It's you'd give them one they want and give them one that you want, but you don't need some amazing studio. You right. you need a towel on your head. You need 
You don't want to sound like you're at a bus depot. That's stupid. Unless you're doing a spot that's in a bus, bus depot. Yeah. Right. You need a microphone that, you know, like what's the um, the one the ones you always tell me is the 416? The, the, no, the 416 or, is $1,000. I'm saying if you have oh. no money and you're starting out the, uh, what's the, the lizard, the... What's yeah, like the lizard. Bucks? Which one What's are you called? talking about? You know the one that's <laughs> the uh, USB. The some people use some people uh, use the Yeti. The Yeti. Yeah, Yeti. The yeah, Yeti, the Yeti is Yeti one Pro, of them. They're yeah. okay. The, it's for an audition. It's not for a yeah, job. The Apogee mic. We like that. Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. One of you know a hundred bucks, a yeah. towel, and uh, and you know and a, and a special weekend. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going back to the voice. So that's as far as the audition is concerned. But the other thing that I like to talk about because everyone will talk about the technique of voiceover and all that kind of stuff is that people forget that back to what we were talking about or what I was talking about. And you're just going, <clears throat> it is, um, it's 51% talent and it's 49% business. And the mistake that I feel most people make and where I've seen people's careers go <clears throat> is it's who, you know, who you, how you treat them, what goes on, because our job is to solve a headache. Right. Our job making someone else's life easier. That's right. Yeah. And people always think, well, if I'm good, well, yes, that's obvious, but this, that's the job. That's yeah. we got a town full of people like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And eager to please, that's fine, but you know, I can do this. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear, I got this, not I can do this. Right. Uh and people mistake, they don't look at the other side of the microphone. They don't look at the talent. They don't look at the uh, the other talent. They don't look at the uh, producer, the writer. They're what their worry is about. Is an actor of commercials, anything? It's a huge, and I don't. I never hear any other voiceover people say this stuff, and probably because I'm wrong. Uh, no, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> according to your IMDb, apparently not. No, I don't know, but it's it's like it's just it's really interesting. I had a gig not too long ago uh, over at LA Studios. In Los Angeles, not LA. I'm sorry. It was uh, uh, Lime and Lime. You know, they have great food and candy, and they say, "Can we get you a, a lovely uh, latte?" And you know, you're like, "Wow, this is life itself. It's great." Yeah. I, I've actually learned that you've arrived in Hollywood when you get craft service. Right. That's I live for that. I do too. But let's remember <laughs> that place is eight hundred dollars an hour. Right. Right. I ain't getting that eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Most of the people in that room who are the talent are not getting that $800. So you got to be realistic about yourself and say, okay, these guys are spending top dollar on this. They're spending top dollar on that. When it comes to you, they don't care. <laughs> it's scale and get out. So you're, you're not, you know, you're thinking, huh. you, you don't fool yourself. Just solve their headache and get the heck out of there. So what was really interesting, uh, I've, I, you know, you, you always think I'll, I've seen everything. I go in there and there's a woman in there and I literally am, it's for a drugstore, and I'm literally am the you know, uh, you know, side effects may be bleeding and death if your brain explodes. <laughs> I was wondering who was doing that. <laughs> yeah, it was like it's one of like... those things. And she, she was like, "Oh, I go to my drugstore," and that was in the room in the in the studio, not not the control room, but in the studio. She had made it her apartment. I've never seen this in my career. I mean, her makeup's out there. She has coats. There's like a a blanket. There's <laughs> what the heck. <laughs> and so I, they said, she was you, moving in. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> I've never seen that, you know, incense lighting, you know, there was a dead body, uh, you know, uh, Jimmy Hoffa came out. It was, it was crazy in there. It was crazy. It was like Regis was there. It was wonderful. Anyway. So, um, my daughter's doing this again. Again, dad. Uh, anyway, so I'll up your allowance. That's right. Anyway. So, so I, I said, the guy, the producers say, uh, she starts talking about her life in between takes and i see the producers going oh great we're hearing about our time in seattle and i'm going whoa man this is i just i you know no one wants to know about your personal life nobody and i just saw her making every mistake and apparently she was good in the read but she just wouldn't shut up and whatever so they said can he come in for five minutes it's just a quick tag so i run in i go member of dic chicago 60609 blah 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 it was one of those sweet gigs yeah i was in and out of there in five minutes I said, thank you. I ate a cookie and I was gone. And I asked for everybody's name, make sure. Thank you. Can I, if you need me again, blah, blah, blah. But I'm out. Right. Well, my agent calls me like 20 minutes later. And he tells me that she was also represented by him. And she said, oh, they hated that guy. He (laughs) caused so many problems. And I'm like, 
what? <laughs> you know, and sure enough, she got canned. And it was a great lesson to me because, number one, I was very aware of what was going on in that room. Two, I thought, this woman's embarrassing and I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. But in the end, she is such a nutbag. She's sitting there complaining about me. And of course, I thought, I can't believe what did I do? What did I do? But I'm just saying it's the business of right. voiceover that people forget about. Right. Let, let's talk a little bit about no. about agents. <laughs> what? Agents. Where? Agents. Ask me again. Okay. Let's talk about agents. <laughs> I love doing that. All right. And I, and I can sorry. see that coming a million there. miles away. I'm sorry. I know. I apologize all over the place. It's like, let me dry that off for yeah. you. Yeah. I, a, lot of peop- a lot of people in our audience perhaps don't have an agent. Mm-hmm. They all want an agent. Yeah. But finding voiceover work is... Drooling. Like, it is. Yeah. yeah I'm, and I know a lot of people in voiceover who are drooling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and the, the, what a great gig that could be. Yeah. Uh, but is it absolutely essential to have an agent to really make a living at this business? Well, I think you know the answer to that. What do you think? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am wearing depends. That's part of getting the, uh, yeah. no, I mean, you know, part of the answer this all before I even say anything. Right. Well, if you want to reach the heights and you want to get higher paying work, it always helps to have an agent. Right. But the majority of work you're going to find is the stuff that you beat the bushes for yourself. Right. And the th- that, again, that's back to relationships. And then there are those uh, websites that pay you diddly. Uh, diddly. <laughs> uh, I have a friend who uh, is a, a, a non-union fellow, and he got a job that was a commercial for this last Super Bowl. They offered him $1,200. Whoa. Now... I don't know. Mostly they pay like a hundred or whatever, but they offered him twelve hundred dollars, and it was a product we all know that usually would be on the Super Bowl, right? And they even told him it's gonna be on the Super Bowl, and we Bowl. know what they were paying just to put the spot on right, there once, right? So. And the thing is, truth of the matter is, if you did scale and air once, you'd make six hundred bucks. So it wouldn't it's not like? But they said they were gonna air this for the year, and I mean, this is where the difference is. But I also understand there's people there who want to make twelve hundred dollars. I get it, uh, but agent wise, it's it, I, I'm. This is me personally. Okay. Not that's why I have here. a problem. No, I just have a problem. I don't. It's nothing about voiceover. I just. <laughs> I have a problem. I'm kidding. Uh, no, I, I have a problem. You see my daughter again? She's just like. <laughs> Gotta get my nails done <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I just love to talk about off camera. Um, the I. You never should. I say this. I say this to you. Do not spend a dime to get representation until you've made a couple of voice tapes until you've gone to classes and you need to go to a class that's not somebody who's going to tell you what a uh, great business voiceover uh, is yeah Yeah. i mean like uh, as an example here in los angeles there's uh uh, i'll give you a great example is um a voice caster in kalmanson Mm -hmm. i mentioned them because they're casting directors right and they're uh teachers so they're a one-stop shop. That's a business thing. You go see them, they start to recognize you. Maybe there's some little special project they'll think about, but you're also doing it with five other people who are really basically trying to kiss up to teacher. Right. So you're going to get a really good idea how well you're going to do by doing something like that. And get a, they may even recommend an agent. You need to be doing it to have that opportunity. And when you make a tape, don't spend three thousand dollars to make a tape did i just ruin someone's business god, <laughs> no, no, no. god i hope and so. by the way when he <laughs> says tape oh sorry real real real, real. he's no. talking about a demo 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 sorry i'm dating myself and you know that's sex with somebody you love woody ellen okay uh no um then that would be tw- no that's another joke i'll stop <laughs> anyway so but the thing is is make have somebody you know charge you very little to make a, a demo to because you don't have the the chops Take a class, learn, find out every day, you, George, me, we, every day someone goes, I think I can be in voiceover. I can do cartoon voices. Every day, every hour, every hour. Yeah. It's like everybody says I have a great voice. Where voiceover has changed is drastically is that it's, it's very much more acting. It's not member of DIC. That's, that's gone. And what's called the voice of God ever since the great Don LaFontaine 
left us. Uh, it's that that kind of thing is gone. They don't want. I mean, I'm doing TV stations across the country, and they don't want tonight on the news. They want tonight on the news, right? Conversational. And they want someone talking to you. They don't want right. someone yelling at you, right? You know. And uh, I do the Big Bang Theory. Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> and it used to be the Big Bang Theory. You know, wow, tonight Sheldon and blah blah blah. That's changed too. CBS wants it now. The Big Bang Theory. Sheldon's got a crazy time and blah blah blah. They want it talked. Right. And if you don't keep your ear to the ground, that's the other thing you're asking about getting an agent. Uh, and I will give the the legendary uh, Jeff Danis this credit. He said that to me. He said, you got to keep your ear to the ground. It always changes every couple months. You have to change with it or you're out. And then he said, you're out. <laughs> so, uh, and Which actually I was the one who said I'm out. And now Mr. Uh, John Wasser, who is my fearless leader. Uh, Wasser is killer as my agent because it's not about just him. It's us. I say, Hey man, I hear this job is open. This gig's open. He goes, all right. Why do all those agents talk like that? Uh, he goes, great. You need to do this. I need to do that. And we will do it together. I can't, and any talent that has a problem with that should jump off a cliff. Right. Because most talents do. No, you get me the audition. Well, there's a million people looking for the audition. Help your agent help you. And if your agent's willing to do that, you're very lucky because there's not a lot of agents that do that. Um, the, most of them are just sitting there. You want it in red? I got it in red. You want it in green? I got it in green. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's the whole thing about getting an agent. Okay. We're talking with Roger Rose here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Yeah. We've worn him out. Uh, I've worn you out. Like, like, no, 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 no. I'm still wide awake. <laughs> so anyway, if you've got a question for Roger... Toss it in the chat room. Have we been getting tons of questions there, uh, Jack? We have some questions. Really? Right. Honestly? Well, we're going to get to those mom. questions. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll get to those questions. Is your name Mrs. Rogers' mom? <laughs> <laughs> right after this. <laughs> Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. Well, we're counting down the hits all the way to number one. That's right. <laughs> all righty. Well, There's a know. long distance, let it... Let it okay. Sorry. okay. There should be a picture behind me of a uh, of something on an ironing board. Uh, spring and spring break is coming, so let's hey, talk. Dude. Let's talk mobile and how the Portabooth Pro and Plus travels so well. Party! Yeah, all right. Uh, you know, <laughs> remember the Plus actually qualifies as carry on and the airline and on the airlines, unlike the competition. I spewed on the airline. I knew. <laughs> Now, now, Harlan says, I flew out of Tacoma for a five-day visit with my son, Graham, and took along a plus. Thank God I brought it along. That's what he sounds like. Thank the, God I brought it along. Harlan backwards is Narlin, man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he was able to do three political spots from his hotel room, saving the time and cost of booking a studio in Seattle. Driving there back and forth would have really cut into his vacation time and, of course, time with his son. Yeah. Okay, where's the picture with me behind with the ironing board? There it is. Where's the iron? It, it, you don't need the iron. Oh, you just need oh, the ironing board. I see. Is you don't need one. That's oh, right. Oh, now, wow. at, vo at VoiceOver Atlanta last year, we were telling everybody, you know, all the, the people are setting up these booths everywhere. And, and they're, they're all wrinkled. Yeah, I know. But they're all in their <laughs> hotel rooms. Because they don't have an ironing board. Right. We were thinking. <laughs> their clothes look like crap. What, would hap <laughs> what happens? Everybody's setting up these booths. What yeah. happens when the... 
the hotel maintenance staff comes in and they see in all these rooms all these different weird booths set up. You go, here's five bucks and take a long walk, honey. Right. Well, we figured they just <laughs> we just thought that That's there was some <laughs> weird religion had taken over their, uh, their yeah. place. But anyway, H2 is a big fan of using the ironing board found in virtually any hotel room as a stand. It's great adjustable scissor stand, just like the keyboardists use. Instant height adjustability with stable room for your laptop or tablet. And best of all, you don't have to haul a 20-pound stand along. What yeah. happens if you have those little tiny ones in the hotel room? Those like They're like, you know, boss, they might be playing. You know, like one those, of those little you guys. You take another one, you put it on top of that. You got to go break into someone else's Absolutely. room. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Now, Harlan's other big suggestion is when you're in a hotel room and the Coke machine is making noise out in the hallway, unplug it. And then put a Do Not Disturb sign out there. Anyway, if you want a Porta Booth Plus, the place to go is voiceoveressentials.com. 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 Where you can get anything you need for your home voiceover studio. Best place to do to go there is just go to the bottom of our page, way down there somewhere. Oh, yeah. There's a picture of Harlan talking into his Porta Booth You're Pro. killing me, Harlan! I know, and you just click on that, it'll take you right to VoiceOver Essentials, and then you will buy everything there. <laughs> no. Anyway, thanks for being our sponsor for seven years, Harlan. Yeah, Lar... Yeah, okay. Narlin. Nar Harlan. Okay. Harlan. We'll be right back. Darlan. <laughs> Darlan? Yeah. Darlan. Darlan. VOBS is still on? Seriously? This is John Bailey, the Epic Voice, and you're watching VOBS.TV, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Newfoundland. Man, there's one show that I can't miss. It's called VOBS. And a lot of people are like, VOBS? What is that? That is BS about... Really? Billions of people are watching this show. Billions. 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 I think it was like the Super Bowl and this. Then this. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. You know. Anyway, Joy Baker asks... Joy... What's there was it? that one night joy and I. talk about timing and she asked just the right question yeah. what's in your home studio setup and what percentage of your voiceover work does you do do you do at home does Where's, i do does you do at your studio what percentage does i do do you what so what do you do where's joy baker live uh she doesn't say we don't know what's her address <laughs> minneapolis <laughs> i've been to minneapolis it's very nice yes and i've done uh, you know my friend mr george over there uh has helped me for so many years do these goofball remotes live remotes and i used idd pddl right i've used source connect and i used that what was that thing that was only for pcs audio tx audio, yeah, TX. audio tx oh my goodness yes uh, i yeah. had that for a while and then uh and then who's the great guy uh with the end uh steve nafshin steve nafshin <laughs> and so you're asking me about my home studio uh George has come because this is this is my usual phone call to George. <laughs> hey, the cleaning. I got two minutes. Knob. Two minutes. <laughs> so, can I talk about the hotels before I get to the Go actual for it. studio? Absolutely. And I know what's her name, Carol. Uh, Joy. Joy. Your name's Carol now. <laughs> I can see how those could be. Yeah, <laughs> Carol. Joy. They're all both dishwashing liquids, aren't they? <laughs> Put some Carol and Joy in your. Uh, eh, so Source Connect. Their sponsor of yours, right? Yes. Has really been the only one that's really worked for me. Uh, but um, they have been actually fantastic. But if, so first I went to Europe, right? This was the big trip for the family. You, you see my daughter's doing this with her finger right now. <laughs> um, we went to Rome, Forenza, and to um, Venezia. Yeah. Mr. George, kind enough because Source Connect was in its infancy. And I had to do CBS. He called each hotel, and then he'd say to me, you can't stay at that hotel. That doesn't have the right whatever. I said, but George, that one actually has plumbing. And he'd go, no. <laughs> you got to stay at Italy, Italy, wonderful El right? Succo Hotel <laughs> because yeah. they have a good internet. And I'm not making that up. I would say, but George, please. He goes, nope. And I would have to stay at El Stinko. But that's fine because it's the job, and that's all that counts. So, you know, my daughter would have to sit there and, you know, no shower, and what, it's a weekend. Uh, so we go to each town, and it's all been arranged, and it's, um, and, uh, and the, you know, and he took photo pictures, and we, we double-checked the thing. It never worked 100%. George had, you know, we had, like, double, triple thing. He said things, and still didn't work. And Joe Cipriano, he makes a lot of cash, and he goes, you want to get the IBT4? I got it. No one makes it anymore. Thanks, and you know, and then you know, it sounded an awful lot like Joe. Yeah, and he, uh, I ran around Verizon for a year, going, "Do you? Have, oh, we don't make that." <laughs> anyway, so 
I'm thinking, though, I got through it. I got through, you know, all these different places. Putting blankets on my head, telling my family to leave the room. I take rollaway beds and put it. Am I, am I making any of this up? No. Desk on the thing, the towel, and the... And the thing is, when you're working overseas, right? the time zone is a mess. Everything right. was at three in the morning. I did. Right. It. I was in Paris. I was under a desk. Just well, you, everything if, you're talking if, about. If I didn't you live have and work in LA, thing. and you want to go to Europe. I have a client who just said, "You know what? I was thinking of going to Italy. I'm just going to New York." That's, that's <laughs> literally. What, that's <laughs> what Wasser literally says. Canceled his trip when he yeah. realized what it was going to take. Wasser Brandon. says, "If you do not have a George or you helping them and he, double, triple checking it, don't do it." He even has a George helping him, and he still decided not to. Well, do because it. the problem is, is you are victim to. Uh, another country and i don't have game i have game in the u.s i can go hi i'm cbs and how are you they let they work with me you right. go in another country they go and uh, uh, no come but that's part of the golden handcuffs you have when you're doing i'm not work. complaining it yeah. is exactly. so we get to venice so we get to venice italy on christmas eve <laughs> who's gonna want me on christmas i called it you don't need oh uh, you don't need me george goes do i need to check this hotel nah Nah, mm. and it wasn't even that nice hotel. It was, it was a pretty nice hotel. It was okay. So we get there. It's like six p.m. in Venice. Ring, ring. <laughs> they need you. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. Oh, so man. George had called about the internet, but nothing. I mean, nothing. And it's Christmas Eve. Yeah, really. But it's like nine a.m. in L.A. Christmas yeah. Eve. So we did that. Luckily, because it was Christmas Eve, and I knew the producer, we did it over a cell phone. And and I would just sort of record it and send it to him, which they don't like. They want it live. Right. But the that was a hundred and fifty dollar phone call and and everything. And it was just uh, and I was only lucky because it was Christmas Eve. So uh, that's a long story to go back to. Just um, and I wanted my show. I wanted a thing for my a car dealership. This is back to the. I'll answer you. You know right. Kimberly's question. I know it's Carol or whatever. Joy. Joy. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was doing a TV show yep. in Pasadena. And we were shooting at a Volkswagen dealership. CBS said, we won't need you. It's fine. They need you. <laughs> Luckily, George said, okay, what do you got? What's the equipment you got? I go, I got the laptop with me. I got the, I got the Source Connect. And he said, you got to have good internet or it's not going to work. And I learned that because I've been screwed. And I lost a huge job at, in Boston uh, at the Marriott. I was the voice of the ACMs. And my internet didn't work because they have a firewall. Just a little tip for all you people. And George said, up. Oh, don't go to Marriott's. <laughs> There's no yeah. way around it. There is no way around a Marriott. So don't go to a Marriott. Anyway, so I said, but so I'm at the dealership and I'm going, what do I do? You know that room in all car dealerships that you go in the back where the guy goes, you need Rust Oleum. The, yeah, uh, right. the, the finance closer. officer. The finance officer. Well, yeah, right. So for whatever reason, these people are all Indian. They're, I don't know why, you know, so I go, I go, excuse me, sir. Yes. And I go, can I use your room? CBS. Ooh, CBS. They go to Big Bang. Ooh, the Big Bang. Ooh, the NCIS. I go, yes. Can I'm going to do that right from your desk. Ooh, this is very good. This is good. So he lets me go in his closing room, right? right. All the computers, the entire brain of the auto dealership is there. And this again is back, goes back to your, yes, goes back to your commercial. With, you know, oh, you know, why are you doing it? I'm sitting there going, oh, what am I going to do? I got to do this thing. So I wait and I get on with CBS and they go, could you turn off your TV? And I go, I don't have a TV on here. You got to just give me a countdown. As soon as you got to give me a 10 second countdown because I just got to take care of this. Cause you don't tell CBS where you are right. or any other producer cause you're telling them your problem. Right. They don't want to know no, your problem. No. This is back to the whole thing. Never tell your problem. You just go, Hey, how are you doing? You tell them your problem. You're gone. So I said, they gave me a count 10, nine, I pull every plug out in that room. Wow. Boom. <laughs> everything. Their, their brain. Everything. And I go, tonight on CBS. NCIS. They go, you got it? You got it? Yeah, I close it up. And I run out and the guy goes, how did it go with the thing? In the oh, it's great. Oh, thank no you very problem. much. Yeah. Okay, bye, bye, bye to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People wow. getting great deals that day. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Thanks, George. Get back to Joy here. <laughs> oh, back to Joy. Yeah, what do you got in your studio? I at home. home. <laughs> what are you doing at home? I'm, well, these days you're, you're in a temporary home. Yeah, so you should explain this more than me. 
Well, I mean, I know you're in a temporary home. You had a major, major pipe. That sounds like I'm a troubled child. <laughs> I'm in a temporary a home. home. I let you're me out for an hour. Home. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you're in a halfway home. No, it's because you're you had a major pipe explosion under the ground in your house. That's it's what been you a nightmare, said. and you're yeah. redoing God, the I hate house when that happens. So yeah, so you've been working from a temporary space. It's worked out pretty well. Uh, but how I mean, you're doing a considerable amount of work from that temporary studio. Yeah. Um, do you ever get to go in? quote unquote, go into the studio, oh, sure. go into how often when you're not traveling, well, how often is if that you're happening? doing animation, you always go animation, in studio. Yes. Right. If you're doing promo, almost never, almost but, never. Uh, but I like to go in studio and see certain things. So I'll go once a week just for my own edification, but they don't care if you, they could care less if you come in. Where are you going physically? Is that CBS? It's TV Rapid? city in Hollywood. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I've done some other networks and other things. And so you, you know, it depends if they want it or not. But CBS knows that I like to see the stuff, and it gives me a better thing. Uh, but animation, yes. And then it's gotten to the point now where they want us to be you. They want us to be you guys. And I never train for that. I don't pretend that I'm good at this. I am not good technically. I blow. <laughs> and so I know from George that if it's an audition situation, I'm fine. If it's a phoner, which he set up for me on Skype, I'm fine. But if it's quality controlled, you know, recording, I'm not fine. I don't know how to edit that well. I don't know how to mix at all. You don't yes. have to, though. Oh, uh, it's getting to the point now where they're asking you to do stuff. And so what you do is you say, well, I could do it, but I think you'd be making a very big mistake. And then they back right. off. Or you hire an engineer that knows what they're doing. And you shouldn't hire. They hire an engineer. Right. You shouldn't. This. The only thing you pay for are lessons and equipment right. and installation. You never pay for a remote or an, that that's, you are opening yourself up to never making any money. Right. It's, it's embarrassing. So, you know, but we can teach you, but you can teach us. Yes. That's that's, and that's why we're here. But I mean, like I, George helped me put in this Apollo. I don't know what I'm doing. And don't touch screwed, it. I've screwed it up drastically. It took him eight hours. So, back to the home studio that's a temporary studio right now. We put boards and foam, and I've learned uh, with some of my musician friends and George that, you know, you don't just soundproof a, a room. You It's bits and pieces, so the sound waves going. The best, and I don't know if you remember this, the best, best sound studio I've ever had, personal sound studio. Barn, I got more compliments on ISDN. Anyway, can anyone I'm, guess? I'm, I'm betting. It's your closet. My wife's closet. Ah, of course. Mm -hmm. More clothes, the better. There were shoes. I'm, you know, I'd be going, tonight, ow! <laughs> you know, <laughs> some of our shoes. It was, George put me in a little corner there, because I didn't have anything then at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it was in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> we smoked a lot. And anyway, but the point, is, she, her, and I, what I learned from Mr. Excitement over there is that the dresses absorb the, the sound, do. but in not just like that it's just in and it, out it takes the sound and it finds its way through the fine lingerie I and stays never, there i have never gotten uh, more compliments on my sound and also how i looked in this one evening gown <laughs> i waxed <laughs> Woo, i was hot what? well now we've talked about everything else how about, <laughs> how about uh, vo uh tracy reynolds says uh, what tips do you have for taking care of your oh, voice. Yeah. Aside from not doing this show. Right. Wow. <laughs> wow, that actually, unfortunately, I have really good advice on that one. Go for um, it. I had nodules on my vocal cords twice Ooh. when I was 16, and then I got the old, the, like the old time surgery, which I didn't need. And uh, I, so then you have to relearn to, to talk properly and all that. And then about 15 years ago, uh, I started getting them back. And there's all these famous Beverly Hills voice doctors uh, in in Beverly Hills, Hills which is a good places. place. Yeah, yeah. And oh, mm -hmm. well, this one guy, uh, Dr. Sugarman, said to me, well, you'll be out for three, four months and all that kind of stuff. He said, go see this guy, Stephen Memel. And I strongly recommend him. And Stephen Memel, he's literally like 10 blocks from this studio. Let's give the address. <laughs> um, and he said, I'm... He's been bugging me, and he said that he can cure you for free, and you just have to go get his therapy. And I learned a lot of stuff uh, about breathing and relaxation 
and he cured me. It took six wow. months, but he cured me. And there's ways of finding out if your throat is really uh, not blasted. I was sent first to a guy, I don't want to say his name, and he worked with uh, Paul Abdul and Liza Minnelli. <laughs> Gives you an idea. And his whole theory was you scream, and you scream until... That wasn't a very good theory. <laughs> yeah, but I heard really good dirt on both those ladies. So just that. <laughs> um, anyway, but the point is, is that with your voice, how do you take care of your voice? It's all the obvious stuff. First of all, I learned... The only thing that touches your vocal cords is steam. Nothing else touches your vocal cords. So steam is really good. You know, like one of those Vic, Vic things. Yeah. I was going to say, just going to a Schmitz somewhere. A Schmitz right? is always yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is it's common sense. It's relaxation. I drink, if I drink, I drink on a Friday night. Maybe uh, I'll drink on a Saturday, but I will not drink on a Sunday. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a diuretic. Right. It dries you out. Uh, phlegm. I'm Jewish. Phlegm. So <laughs> always. So no cheese during, you know, if you're, if you really want, you know, those kind of things. Unless you're doing something Jewish. <laughs> in that case. it's right. always, I once did a uh, $100,000 candy bar commercial. Yeah. And this is when I first started. And I walk in and they brought in a case of $100,000 candy bars. And the whole bit was, we asked a man what he thought of the, and I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, again, acting, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know. Right. So by the third candy bar, I'm like, yeah, you know, like this. I said, I can't do anymore. But I remember that commercial. <laughs> oh, really? I do. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's five bucks. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyway, the, the, the main thing about taking care of your throat is the obvious. Number one is breathing. You really need to learn about your breathing. There's voice lessons that you could use to help open your throat. But steam and also the obvious, the drinking. And then the most crazy thing that I learned is... Crowded, loud restaurants or bars. If you go to those, those are the worst thing for your voice because yeah. you jump an octave. You, you're like talking like this and you're really stretching your throat trying to talk to you and all that kind of... Because you can't hear yourself because right. it's so loud. So you need to train yourself. And during that time when I was going on, I said, well, I really have to be at this thing. It's a big uh, event and I'm, you know, talking there and everything. This was during my... Uh, the reason I went to see him and all this happened because that was the week of my audition of Price is Right. Oh. And I had nothing. I had nothing. And by the third Price is Right, it was gone. I was like, come on, man. But he got me through three shows, which is pretty impressive. Anyway, the end of the story is that um, he said, go. I said, no, you're telling me I'm not allowed to go. He goes, no, go. You'll be fine. And I went and I came back to him the next day. I'm like, I, I, I. and he goes, Did you get that out of your system? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, it's up to you. You want to do this in the future? You have no career. Go for it. Right. Yeah. We tell people at voiceover conferences, which can be loud affairs. Yeah. Inside voices. Yeah. Go to the quiet end of the bar. And that's once where all the pretty girls are. Mm -hmm. Two, it's also where there's not as much noise. And it, it's breathing. It's, yeah. it's, it's literally, there's obvious stuff in voice lessons. And I, I want to uh, pimp him one more time, if I may. Stephen Memel, M-E-M-E-L. He really gets it. He's a yeah. singer. He trains singers, and he, but, he, but he gets, it's all, because it comes from here, it's all about relaxation and your breath. And every time I had to do a, a syndicated package, and my voice was still not 100%, and he found the, uh, you know, it was, it was Two Broke Girls. So tonight on Two Broke Girls, and I have it in my head now. I have it because your brain, so when I needed to go to that where I wouldn't hurt my throat, I knew where to lock into it. Right. And that was his teaching. And it, and there's a thing on Frank Sinatra uh, on PBS about, I don't know if you've seen it, it's like a four-hour documentary. Uh, he yeah. talks about his early days, yeah. and he talks about how he didn't get it until he went to a vo vocal coach, and how your upper voice, and, and he showed, and there's a pictures of the air going through, and he and he said that's what gave him his career. Wow. So it really yeah. is there. I, and I'm always told, you know, even just as a voice actor, it's good to take voice lessons. It really Learn is. Learn how to project your voice properly and not over yeah but i mean acting is first and foremost <clears throat> right. now but but if you're having vocal problems you need to take a voice lesson or 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 you know and here's the other one which is hard for i think shut up you know i know it helps yeah we got time for one more question one more so do i do i do the Spin one from the wheel who's it gonna be who's it gonna be jack or Will maxine it be jack or maxine yeah jack it could be a special trip for you or maxine <laughs> I'll wax your legs. Okay. Yeah, I've seen it is. <laughs> okay. Well, you, well this kind of dovetails off of what you're talking about was training. Well, yeah. 
But with Maxine, Maxine, well, Maxine was asking. If, I like that name. What's Maxine's last name? Did she say Maxine Dunn? My last name is Dunn. Oh, that's me. oh, that's you. Wow, she really <laughs> went, went far. Hi, Maxine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what yeah, other, what other yeah. formal training uh, okay. did you have besides working with a vocal coach? What other training well, did you have along the way? I'm I'm different than the most, as you can obviously tell. <laughs> well, Maxine, I'll tell you. No, because I come from a performing family, uh, I really learned on the job. I, I My mother and father were broadcasters, but then... I took a lot of uh, uh, improv. I studied. I studied the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art for the summer program, and I studied at Strasbourg and all that junk. But I also studied the Groundlings. Do you know who was in my Groundling class? Uh, the, the, lots of great people went through there. Yeah, uh, but this is depressing. Who? He was 16 years old. He was going to high school, and we went through the whole class together. Yeah, and Jim he um, he was writing movies, and then I got VH1. I give Groundlings the credit for helping me with VH1 and Friday the 13th. Because I was already doing voiceovers and stuff. And I went to do VH1. He went to Sarah Lawrence. Some guy named J.J. Abrams. And he would come on my show as the half mime. He had like, a, his voice was, I mean, his face was half white from his nose up. And he goes, I'm going against the wind. I go, you're talking. He goes, I'm a half mime. You know? Anyway, uh, very funny guy. And we've we've kept up since then. Um, but uh, he was, really, and uh, what's her face was our teacher. Um the red-headed comedian, uh, crazy Lucille Ball. No, no. yeah, right. She went, Ow! I got a great Lucille Ball story. Oh, Carrot top. Uh, no, Carrot um, top. Um, top. No, close. Uh, the one who got all, who got herself in trouble, Kathy Griffin. Uh, Kathy, um, Kathy yeah. Griffin. Yeah. But, uh, quick Lucy story. When I was a page at CBS, I told you I was eighteen, and there was talk shows going on, and I got to meet Betty Davis. They were all like at their last moments. <laughs> right. Betty Davis, uh, Orson Welles, and Lucille Ball. And Lucille Ball uh, was on, and again, she was, you know, pretty old. Yeah. And maybe, I'm not saying, but maybe there was a couple of uh, things that she enjoyed prior to the broadcast. And so they said to me, you need to have her sign her contract. I go, I'm a page. Just just do it. And so I go over, and, you know, you've heard the stories about her, but she was very happy and very nice. She goes, hi, honey. <laughs> and And... She grabs my hand. She goes, I can't see. You have to sign this for me. I go, no, no Miss Paul. You have to sign it. No, honey. And so my hand in her hand and I'm helping her sign the contract. She was like, ah. I'm like, okay. And then Orson Welles, if I may tell that. Sure. I'll shut up here after all this. Orson Welles was, if, if you don't know who Orson Welles was, see Pinky in the Brain. It's Maurice Lamarck's. Yes, Pinky. It's one of the great. Director, writer, performers of all time. We'll sell no wine. We'll sell no wine. And he had this booming voice, right? Yeah, so, right. and he was larger than most motor homes. And so, I'm knocking on his door. They told me when anyone was in trouble, they would make me do it. So I knock on his door. Nothing. Mr. Wells. Mr. Wells. Nothing. Then come in. You know, you know like the, the Wizard of Oz, right? And I'm 18. I'm open the door, and it's completely dark in his dresser. There's nothing, no windows or anything like that. I'm, Trying to find him, you know. I feel this on my hand, and I go, "Oh no, he's not gay. I hope he's not gay. This is not good." And he goes, "Turn on the lamp." And I'm like, mm -hmm. and I, and I, "He turns the lamp on because I can't find it." He goes, "What do you want?" And there's you know Orson Welles, and I go, "Sign the hand in hand." We just hand the thingy. He signs it, hands it to me. Goes, "Turn off the light." I'm like, mm -hmm. and then as I'm walking, he goes, "Kid." And I go, yes, sir. And he goes, I'm in a bad mood. Please forgive me. And I went, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Which I thought was really, again, Menchie. Yeah. And closed the door and I peed myself. Wow. <laughs> Orson Welles has that impact on a lot of people. I guess. It was, I mean, you know, again, I told you, I don't try to knock. Uh, he both. Right. Very cool. Right. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, Roger, it's been a pleasure Thank having you. you on. This Thank is you much. one story after another. Thank you. All right, and George and I will be right back to wrap things up into a nice tight little ball in just a sec. 
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Um... And, and we're back here on voiceover body shop mm -hmm. god one story after another the guy's been there he's done it he has it's fascinating you know and uh, prolific and, guy and great and great tips too as well well next week on this very show we have the lovely tracy limley will be joining us well hopefully without all her all her kids either Oh, she has a yeah. lot of kids, yeah, she but she has be a remote, right? Yes, yeah, she'll yeah. be remote. She's, mm -hmm. but she's got this great program teaching people how to market properly on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. It's yes. a great program. Okay. Uh, March 5th, Carlos Alizraki. Oh. And I, he, the guy's been, like Roger, he's done a lot of stuff. He, he knows what our show's about. Yeah. And he's still coming on. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Believe it or not. Uh, March 12th, the guy you and I both want to meet, uh, <laughs> Mike Del Guado, who's the booth junkie. You're not going to believe this. Yeah. Let me tell you the way you actually say his name. Weado. You're not going to believe me. Okay. It's Del Gaudio. Del Gaudio. Like literally. Del Audio. Audio. Like audio is part of his name. Ah. He was, he was born for this. <laughs> yeah. Mike Del Gaudio. He's the booth junkie on YouTube. Right. Uh, March 10th, Dan O'Day. Who has some great tips for for voice actors? Yeah. And then March twenty sixth, talking about uh, throat doctors, Dr. Rena Gupta will be with us from uh, Osborne Head and Neck. She's really good. She's you know almost as good as Joel Bernstein. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, let's see here. Uh, April second, we're taking off for Easter, Yay! Passover, and all that stuff. We need it eventually. Night. We're going to yeah. need it by then. Yeah. Who are our donors of the week? Oh man. Well, let's take a look. We've got. Uh, we got you guys have heard a lot of these names because a lot of folks are regular. But mention them again because they're donors, donating money. They're giving us money, so we'll say their names. And if you're one of them, we'll say yours too. Like Tracy H. Reynolds. Thank Tracy, you, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. A very regular donor. Eric Aragoni, uh, still hitting us on every episode. Um, Tremaine Mosley, great guy. Great. He's a he's a subscriber and he donates every single month. Um, going down the list here, we've got Philip Sapir. Also a subscriber to the show. You can donate one time. You could donate on a recurring monthly basis. If Every you want. day if you'd want to. Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah Borges, and that's a monthly donation. And last but not least here on this list, Antland Productions. Mm, you, you know him, you yeah. love him. Uncle Roy, yes. Mm. Uh, let's see here. We know georgethetech.com. That's right. That's where my tech stuff is, and we all know homevoiceoverstudio.com. That's right. That's where you're going to find us. Uh, let's see. What else here? Oh, show logs. The show logs. Jack, Jack the goalie is out there still in the desert writing every word we ever say. It's there with the YouTube video tomorrow. Yeah, and it's all time stamped, so you can find something you want to see and click, and it goes right to yeah. it on YouTube. And our podcast version is on Stitcher, mm -hmm. Podbean, is the host, but it's on iTunes as well. And if you type in VOBS into any pod catching type utility, you should be able to find us. All right. But if you want to watch it live, you can come here into our studio. You can come here in the studio. Or you can watch us live Monday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, that's right. 9 p.m. We'll Eastern. We'll take you here. Time. We'll take you online. We, if you want to go from listening to watching, it's live 6 p.m. every Monday night. Right. And uh, But you can come, if you're in the greater Los Angeles area, you can be here in the studio, like the huge amount of people we had here tonight, Yay. applauding and having a having a great time watching the show. And uh, all you have to do is write to us at the guys at vobs TV. And by the way, show us your booths. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's, you know, with this is just somebody's, this is really just a nice studio, but we want to see your home studios. That's right. You could have Dan and George sitting in your home studio. Send it to us. Nice high res picture. It'll be behind us one week. That's right. People are afraid to do that stuff. Participate. That's what makes the show fun. No matter how small it is. Imagine Dan and I crammed in your closet. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Send it in. Be fun okay. for you. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, okay. We need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan. That's right. And VoiceOver Extra. Uh, Source Elements. vo 2 gogo VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins demos for providing the uninterrupted live stream and bandwidth. And it was uninterrupted tonight. That man over there. Yeah. So we, we, we need to thank Marcy for letting us be out here in the garage, That's which right. I think is fabulous. And, uh, and of course, our producer, Catherine Curridan, for getting his great guest like Roger Rose. up a lot of guests. That's, you know, that's fabulous. And, uh, and our floor producer tonight, the son of our regular floor producer, Hat. That's right. Hat did a great job. This was literally, not that he needs a disclaimer, but this was the first show he did totally solo. Right. And he did a great job. And it was actually pretty tight. Yeah. Which is kind of like that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jack Daniel doing the chat room. Oh, Jack. He was thanks, thanks, Jack. The floor producer, all right, as well tonight. So that was very helpful. Yeah. And uh, Jack the goalie for the show notes, and of course Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. Come visit us, Lee, please. All right, well that's going to do it for us tonight. What a great show! I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whitem, and this is Voiceover Body Shop or VO BS. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Monday night. Good night. VO. And I love VO. How much BS is going to be in this show? There's only one way to find out, baby. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. And you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Meow. Ah! Snails like it, too. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else.